Married with the Business is brought to you by Audible.com. everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Married with a Business. I'm Craig. And I'm Allison. And we're Married with a Business. We're here to share tips, tricks, stories of what it's like for us to be a married couple that own and operate a business together. How you doing this week, Allison? Craig, I'm good. So our oldest son is now a Boy Scout, which I think we've mentioned before. And they just had their first real camp out as a troop. I mean, and with a big asterisk on it because they were sleeping on somebody else, uh, somebody's property and not like up in the mountains. But it was a bit of an experience for their first camp out. But it was out in the woods and the the, yeah. the, the, the the person's property that's on, they own like, I don't know, like 10 acres and it was out in the woods, like off of a lake. And, and so it was like camping out. Like, yeah, it was like camping, it was out, full but, on camping out, but with the caveat that like, they could, if something happened, get back up to the main house. <laughs> right. They were only a five or ten minute walk back up to the main house. Yeah, because I think of of the troop, I think like two more than two thirds of the troop, this they've just moved up. Um, there's a bunch of older kids, but uh, they're mostly fifth graders and who haven't done a lot of this stuff yet. But what made it interesting was, so this was their first like Boy Scout camp out and it was cold and sleeting and raining. It wasn't like it was a nice 65 degrees. It was cold and, and sleety. And what was great was... This was an adventure. Yeah, it was an adventure. And what was great was is a couple of days, a day or two before, the Scoutmaster texted everybody and said, hey guys, you know, we're all young. The weather's looking a little rough. What does everybody think? Do we want to postpone this a week or two and see if we can get better weather? And our son and a bunch of the other boys were like, no, we still want to do it. Yeah, and I was really proud of them for that. But full disclosure, last minute yesterday morning, I was running to REI to get boots and rain pants and things. But they did great. I picked them up this morning. Um, they were all happy. They were like, it wasn't that bad. Um, there were a couple of kids who didn't come because their parents were like, oh, no, it's going to rain. But um, the they were, there were 12 of them there, and they had a, an amazing experience. So I'm really proud of them, especially, you know, some of these kids they haven't, you know, they've been a little pampered, let's be honest. Right. So, like, they, they dug in, and they did great. Right. I mean, one of the kids got a, got a cut on his hand and had to, had to go get that checked out. But came back, you know, went back into everything, didn't, didn't, you know, I was, uh, when I heard the stories today, when, when our oldest was telling us the stories of the, of the night and everything, I thought it was great. Yeah. I mean, he went to urgent care and he was like, I'm going back. And, um, our, our son said, oh, I made dinner for him. I hid an extra juice box because if he came back, I wanted him, it to be ready. And I just the maturity that these kids are starting to gain through this experience is just amazing. And I think it's hard sometimes as a parent, you want your baby to stay a baby. And I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm actually starting to reach that plateau where I'm really ready. Like I'm really excited for him to be able to, to, you know, blossom and go and be, and you know, become a, an adult, you know, yeah. learn those mature things that he needs to, to learn. Well, and for me, um, I'm also start as the kids are getting bigger, um, they need more and less in different respects. But I also am starting to balance it with the fact that my parents need more and less from me in different respects. Um, I'm starting to see that now that we're in our mid 40s, we are really looking down the barrel of being that true, quote unquote, sandwich generation. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about this week on the show, which is being that of that age, because we are now of that age where we have to still take care of our kids that are still growing and learning. And they're, you know, and they're of that. You still have to drive them places and get them to activities. And on the other end, we're starting to also have to take care of our parents and worrying about them and getting them to doctor's appointments or or checking on them and being you know keeping a mindful eye on their finances and and for us you know everybody most everybody has to go through this right so most you know uh, adults at some point in their 40s or 50s have to take care of their parents and their kids but we have that added thing as entrepreneurs that we have to take care of 
a business as well. Right. So like, so if you've never heard the word sandwich, the term sandwich generation, it's not like boom, baby boomers or generation Xers or generation Zers. Um, it's kind of a, that moving target. It really is just a description about a group of middle aged adults who are caring for both their aging parents and their children. Um, and, you know, g- both groups need support from them. Yeah. So you're it's a sandwich. You're in the middle of the sandwich. It's, you know, so. Uh, so, yeah, I think for us, it's starting to become we're starting to realize that more and more. I mean, both of your parents and, and my mother are still, you know, very independent. They're still able to drive themselves to the doctors and and take care of themselves. But we're starting to see, you know, us needing to have a little bit more of a mindful eye on things. Yeah. I, you know, I need to know what medications they're taking. I need to know, you know, I we're starting to have those conversations about what bills they have, um, you know, the those kind of check-in things with them. It's estimated that 11 million caregivers provide unpaid care to children and adult parents. That's about 28% of all caregivers right now. So this is, as the baby boomers do get older, this is definitely a, something that's going to become more of a topic and more of something that people have to think about because we are also children who aren't necessarily who don't necessarily have our parents living with us like maybe our parents grew up with a grandparent living with them and they they say that the average caregiver in the sandwich generation is that late 40s early 50 year old woman because and that is true most of the time it's the daughter it's the female that's taking care of the kids and the you know adult parents and that they're providing approximately 20 unpaid hours a week of caregiving. Yeah, and about 26% of them are parents of a minor as well and are paying and are about 50% financially supporting their parents as well. So there is this, there's a whole lot of stuff going on with, you know, not just being a middle-aged adult, but being a middle-aged parent and a middle-aged child. Um, And where we're starting to see things creep in is we're also building businesses and trying to plan for our own future on top of the kids' future and our parents' future. Well, and there's that stat out there, and I don't know it off the top of my head, that talks about like your biggest wealth building years as an adult are from your mid-40s to your mid-50s. Those are the years that either from a business owner standpoint or from a career standpoint, if you're an employee, you're building your highest amount of wealth, your, you know, those, those, you know, those uh, investments for your retirement, all of those are growing at the biggest rate in that time period. And so on top of all of that wealth building that you're trying to do so that you can retire and that your kids can go to college, you're also trying to manage those other those other things being your parents and or your children. Yeah, caregiving.com reported a stat that they that they found that um, women age 50 and older who leave the employment to care for their parents on average lose about $330,000 in wages and benefits over their lifetime. So there is a financial impact to it too whether you're an employee or you are An entrepreneur. And I think, you know, before we talk about how it affects the business, Allison, even if you take the business out of that and you're and you even if you take work out of that, you know, there's there's those other factors that, you know, go in there like that burnout and, you know, that feeling of like, you know, guilt and isolation and depression of I'm the only one I'm by myself trying to raise these kids and take care of my parents. So I think those are, you know, the mental health aspect of it, you know, on top of the financial aspect of it, too. Right. I think that, you know, I this is a discussion I recently had with a friend that I've spent so much time taking care of babies and businesses that now that the quote unquote babies are a little bit older and they don't need my support as much um, because we're also very aware of trying to train our kids to be responsible for themselves that I'm in this weird pocket right now where I don't know what to do with myself because We've spent 20 years building a business that has systems and taking hats off of me. And we've spent almost 12 years raising kids who can take care of themselves to some degree. And now um, 
I've lost a lot of myself, but as I start to figure out what I'm doing, I'm also looking at the fact that now I'm going to have to take care of parents as well. Um, whether it's for a, a short season or a long season, will that's yet to be determined. Yeah, and I think the other part of it is is yeah, it's 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 also how it affects the marriage, right? Because I mean, that's what we talk about on this show: being married and having you know a business together and raising a family together and being in the sandwich generation together. And and we're lucky to some extent because you know when we look at our parents, your your parents are about eight years older than my mother, so your parents are you know your family's a little bit older, so. In our mind, the thought process is, hey, hopefully we'll deal with one and then have to move to the other and and go straight down the line. But that may not be the actuality of it. But I think also for us, it's that communication, right? It's how it affects our marriage and our and our time and our time with each other. And, and we're finding it hard now. I mean, finding that time to go away with each other or get a date night with just each other. Yeah, and I think that, you know, as entrepreneurs who are part of the sandwich generation, like everything else, we are lucky and we are unlucky in the fact that to some degree we our time to some degree our time is malleable and um, there are times when our finances are malleable and um, but not all the time. We are also in that tough position where between both families, there's just one sibling. You have no siblings and I have one sister. So for us, um, as much as my sister and I can split responsibilities with your mom, there's no splitting responsibilities. Um, and I, both you and I have the ability to look back and remember what our parents went through and talk about, okay, where did it work and where didn't it work with our parents and what can we do? So one of the things as I'm thinking about Early, hopefully early enough, us moving into the Sanders generation is having these conversations early as part of our life plan of how are we going to deal with some of this stuff. We've already worked on a little bit of it when we moved your mom from West Virginia to Boston. Like we had that conversation. Do we do an addition? Does she have her own place? If she has her own place, what are the short and long term needs? And so those are Things that I think entrepreneurs especially need to be thinking about um, as we're looking at our parents aging and how do we plan ahead. Yeah, and I think that there's a there's a lot that goes into it because it's not it's the planning, it's the you know the simultaneously trying to be a parent and a caregiver to a child and a a child to a parent. You know those all of these things you have to balance and and what's really hard. You know, for us, it's 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 that balance of it's really hard sometimes to turn to your kids and say, hey, you need to be independent. You need to grow and then turn to your parents and say, hey, you need to let us help and you need to le not be as independent sometimes and let us be a part of big decisions and whatever it might be. And I think with my parents now, my parents are in their mid, almost mid to late 70s. Um, they're both in fairly good health. They're both at fairly good um, cognitively. I, because of the way our family's been set up, I do like help them with their finances and kind of keep an eye on things. And we're right now in that, in that in between where they don't need my help a lot, but I do manage some of it. And it's like, and it's like some days we're going along great. And then some days I think they go, I'm not, a, I'm an adult. I don't, I don't need to run things by you. And then, it, and then I'm like, oh, but I get blindsided by things because it's it's not all or nothing kind of at this point. Right. And getting in, you know, as we get older, that's I think that's going to be my biggest challenge is is having them release some more of that control. And I get it. It's you know, we've talked about this with business with tran transitioning businesses and family. It's the powdered butt syndrome. And I try to be very aware of that. Um, you know, if you don't know what the powdered butt syndrome is, if they've changed your diaper and powdered your butt, they don't want your advice on money. <laughs> right. And I think, you know, like anything else, the, the, I think the difference is too is, is your dad was an entrepreneur. He went through the vast majority of his life doing what we're doing now, which is making decisions and being the person that's in charge. And I think that, you know, as he gets into his 70s and in his early 80s, that's going to be a challenge of getting him to understand, you know, the balance of not being that person as much because he needs to, 
you know, everything needs to be a little bit more of an open book and everybody does need to be working together to make sure everybody's safe and, and things don't happen. I, I just recently talked to a friend of mine who, who is having a struggle with his mother who is in her eighties and she, uh, has had an issue where two or three times now she's gotten taken for money because she doesn't understand, you know, the phone call, the, the, the phone calls, the predatory phone calls or emails that come through. And so he's having that struggle of, you know, trying to get her to understand that he needs to be a part of it. Um, I think that, you know, those are definitely things that are on the horizon for you and I. And and it, and I I'm not looking forward to on the other end when we're at that age and having to do, you know, we say today, well, will we won't do this to our kids, but I know that's easier said than done. Like I'm not going to be I you know, I'm not going to be the way the father was my father was to me to you, but it's still going to happen, right? Exactly. It does. Yeah. Um and in terms of our business, I think that in the back of my mind, as we've been building our business, because I'm very honest, like when I came in 20 years ago, I said my goal is to build a sellable business, whether right. we sell it or not. And when we had kids, you know, one of part of my discussion was I've got to keep taking these hats off. So if something happens, I can step away. And I, in partially, that's also been our discussion with a, with our parents, too. Like, um we're building my role as a visionary and trying to take more and more day-to-day tasks off. If I've got to hop on a plane unexpectedly to Florida for three weeks, I need the business to keep running. I need our source of income to be set up in such a way that it can keep running with me checking in, but not having to be tied to my desk every day. Um, So as an entrepreneur, that's something I'm also trying to build into that emergency planning. Yeah, I think for us, you know, to be specific about it. I think that we've built the business now where you can be away and you can even do a a good portion of your work remotely, right? Like you can log in and do some of the the things that you need to do remotely. I I worry more about it for me. And we've made the decision that you're going to be the person that has to to do that, right? Like we've sat down as a couple and we understand, you know, my, my role in the business is still much more, you know, every day making sure the wheels keep turning. You have a, your role is a little bit more tactical and doesn't necessarily have to be in it every day. You can jump in, jump out and jump in as necessary. And I think that's one of the decisions that we've made as a business owner, knowing that we're not at that point yet, but you're right. It could happen any moment. It could happen tomorrow where you do have to jump and go somewhere and check on something or deal with something. And that we've made the decision if it, if it's with your mom and dad, or if it's even with my mom, that you're going to be that person. And I think, We had that conversation early on, I think, as part of kid planning, but also, you know, when your dad got sick nine years ago and passed away, that was something that we had to, we struggled through a little bit. And I think as we came out the back end of that, um, when your dad was sick, you really wanted to, you wanted to be the person that was there. And um, so, so you were there more, but I think that having gone through that, we, having those conversations about, okay, if this happens again, how are we going to address it was really helpful. It's again, like I've said before, it's always helpful to have these what if conversations before something happens. Yeah. I mean, when that happened uh, back in 2013, like in 2014, there was, I was traveling a lot and there was a lot of me away from the business and it was a stress because I was the primary and still am the, the primary salesperson for the business. So I'm bringing in um, the, the sales. I'm making sure the funnel is getting filled from the top as it goes through. And I think that we learned in that experience that, wow, we have to make a better plan moving forward. And so part of that was, yes, we wanted to get my mother closer. So if that stuff did arise again, she was local and we were able to handle that. And two is to make the decision that you were going to be the person that, you know, as we dealt with these things, as these things came up, that you were going to be the person that was going to have to leave work and deal with some of that stuff. Yeah. And luckily then we were still, we were just kind of, we were still in that transition process with my dad. So my dad was able to be that emergency person to come back and step in. Um, But that was also difficult too, uh, because the business had changed since he had left, but he did an amazing job for the short notice we had, which is why on 
our action plan now is to look at those key manager roles and really keep talking about if something happens, what are the, we going to do and discuss it with our staff and discuss it with our team. Yeah. And we're lucky now. Now we're at a position where we do have some additional salespeople. So if something does actually happen to me, but um, going back to talking about being the sandwich generation, you know, and how it affects you know, our business. I mean, obviously we've made um, some, you know, factors. We factored in some things for that. The one thing that I think we're starting to work on is how do we factor in like the emotional, you know, sort of handling of it. I think that that's the hardest part for us right now, Allison, is, is, you know, we're, we're not there yet where it's, you know, 20 hours a week or whatever it might be, but we, we are starting to think about, you know, how do we keep everybody in the loop? How do we keep ourselves recharged and emotionally there? All of those things. Yeah. You know, um, things that I've been thinking about are we do have to take time to recharge. We do have to schedule in some of that downtime. And I know Friday, you scheduled in some downtime, which was a good mental health break for you. Um, I scheduled a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I just have to go get a massage. My back hurts. I don't feel great. Um, just making a conscious effort to, even though I, we're so busy, to put it in our schedule. Um, and then start talking with family members about how are you going to communicate Um you know, even though you don't have siblings, you do have aunts and uncles who we communicate a lot with because of your aunt, because of your aunt. Um, so kind of using that same system, how or something happens to your mom, how are we going to keep talking, whether it's an app, whether it's a Google Drive? You know, my sister and I are starting a Google Drive where if she gets information about medication changes or I do, we both have access to it. I think that's that's a just like with a business sharing the access and not having it be like a little secret over here. So if I'm with mom and something happens or Christine's with mom and something happens, we both have can have access to that information. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the challenges is to be able to sit down and have those open and honest conversations with, you know, your your parents as, as we come through this is to talk to them and say, like, listen, I understand you want to maintain independence and we want you to maintain independence, but we need to also be prepared for what if something happens to mom and she knows all of the medications dad's taking or vice versa, or what if something does happen to dad and we need to understand understand where the money is so that mom can still pay the bills or we can help her pay the bills. And so I think for, you know, most families, that's the hardest part is having that conversation and being ahead of that so that you're not scrambling when something does happen. And I worry about those of you who maybe you have more siblings and one and you are that primary person for mom and dad, um, not taking on too much. And I don't want to say being the martyr, but feeling like nobody else can do it. I have to be with mom all the time. You know, my brother can't come in and help because of X, Y, Z. Um, because it's not healthy for you and it's not healthy for your kids or your or your grandkids, depending on your age. Um, and it's not healthy for your relationship with your siblings. Right. Or, or your parent that you're helping take care of. Um, so I think that, you know, if... I could, if I could push you, if you're that person, like tell them what you need and hold them to the expectation that you, that you, that they're going to help you because you can't do it all alone and it's going to, it'll break you and it'll break the whole dynamic. And I think that, you know, that one thing about you and, and your sister are as, as vastly different as the two of you are, and you both have your strengths and your weaknesses. I think it's it's really good that the two of you do communicate a good amount, you know, about your parent offline about your parents. Sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes it's it's venting to each other because I think you guys. I think that's a healthy thing. You know, I think it's healthy for you and your sister to have to vent to each other sometimes about mom said this or dad did that. Um, and I think that having that open and honest conversation, you know, with them it, it, with each other is is something that does help. It's so much easier to have open honest conversations with the, with you though sometimes. Um, yeah, because I think what happens. And the older we get is you get part of a story, you get part of a story. And like if we can pull the parts together, then we can figure out what the real story is. Yeah, it's it's inter it's definitely interesting sometimes because we all it, you and me and your sister talk to your 
parents sometimes and we all get pieces and parts of the story and then the three of us will have a text chat or we'll sit down together or we'll catch up with each other and then we'll put the story together and, and make the whole book. Yeah. And I think one other tip I would suggest people remembering is to, it, this is a season, right? We talk about that in business all the time. This downturn, this upturn, this is a season and it won't last forever. So how do we make a good plan to get through it and thrive, not just survive, as um, is really important. You know, and as we get into the sandwich generation more, I'm sure our advice and our thoughts will change. And I'd love to hear um, from some of you guys out there who are going through it or have gone through it and what worked or what didn't work for you. Um, because part of part of this whole experience is sharing tips and tricks of, you know, I'd love to make our process easier and make other people's processes easier. Yeah, it's always, I mean, we're, we definitely don't have the silver bullet and it's always great to hear other people's ideas and thoughts. And there's a lot of great resources out there too, Allison. Caregiving.com is is one website. Care.com is another website. There's some great resources out there for people who are caregivers or are hoping to, or hoping or planning to be caregivers and, and finding ways, you know, to help out. Those are two really great websites. There's also a great book that you can get on audible.com, Allison. Yeah, I just found this book, um, My Parents Keeper by Jody Gastfriend. And I believe I heard her speak at the Social Women's Conference a couple years ago, which is why it popped in my mind. But it's it's the whole book is talking about being in that sandwich generation and in working through it. Yeah. yeah. My Parents Keeper, The Guilt, Grief, and Guesswork and Unexpected Gifts of caregiving uh, is available on audible.com. You can get a free 30 days of audible on us. All you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash biz married. That's audibletrial.com slash biz married to get that free 30 days of audible on us. And we'd love to hear what you think, you know, tell us what it's like for you to be a caregiver for your, to be part of that sandwich generation and, and what you might do or some tips and tricks you might have. Find us online. You can find us on Instagram or Twitter at Biz Married. You can also find us on our website, marriedwithabusiness.net. It's got resources, information uh, on there too, Allison. Yeah, and please fill, visit the website and fill out our form so that we can hear your story, whether it's about being the sandwich generation or anything else in terms of being married with a business. Yeah, so check that out, marriedwithabusiness.net. Thanks for listening this week, everybody. And remember, not only is it important to focus on your business, but also your marriage and sometimes your kids and family because we're married with a business.